Okay, breaking news, big news, at least in the menopause world. This week, the FDA approved a new non-hormonal drug to get rid of hot flashes, pisolinitant. Women are celebrating and menopause experts such as myself are also celebrating because we finally have a safe, really effective option for women who can't take estrogen or choose not to. And given the impact that hot flashes have on sleep, work, and your heart, and all the other things I keep talking about, I can't emphasize enough that getting rid of your hot flashes isn't just about quality of life, it's about length of life. But you already knew that from episode two, think your hot flashes can't kill you, think again. So in this episode, I'm going to start by quickly reviewing the science behind a hot flash and explain why a lack of estrogen causes you to get hot flashes. And then I'm going to move on to how this new drug, fesolinitant, works, how well it works, and the side effects. And then I'm going to get to the big question. Is fesolinitant the way to go or is hormone therapy the way to go? Starting with the basic science behind a hot flash. The human body is meant to be roughly 98.6 degrees, and your body has a number of mechanisms to keep you at that temperature. So if you go outside in the winter and you're not wearing any clothes, your naked body is going to shiver. Shivering will generate heat, which is your body's attempt to get warm. When you exercise, your body temperature goes up, and sweating is the body's way to try and cool down. The part of the brain that controls this temperature regulation is known as the thermoregulatory zone, which is located in the hypothalamus. Physiologically, a menopausal hot flash happens for the same reason you sweat in a sauna or when you exercise. The body is trying to cool itself off. The difference is that you don't really need to cool down, but your menopausal brain thinks you do. Why? Because during menopause, the thermoregulatory zone malfunctions. To dive a little deeper into the science, the thermoregulatory center in the hypothalamus is controlled by special neurons, the neurokinin-3 receptor neurons, also known as NK3 neurons, but commonly called the candy neurons. It's pronounced like the chocolate stuff, but it's spelled with a K, K-N-D-Y. This is the part you need to know. Candy neurons are controlled by estrogen. You know where I'm going here. During perimenopause and postmenopause, when estrogen levels plummet, the candy neurons no longer function, expand, and go into overdrive as a desperate attempt to get the thermostat working again. This disruption in candy neuron activation throws off your body's ability to keep your body temperature in balance, resulting in hot flashes hot flushes, night sweats. Now, this is a bit of an oversimplification, and there are other things that impact on your body's ability to regulate body temperature. Your endocannabinoid system, as an example, also plays a role, which is why cannabis might, and I mean might, help with hot flashes. I'm not going to get into that now, and I covered that in episode nine, can cannabis help your sweats, your sleep, your sex, I just wanted to make the point that estrogen is not the only thing that impacts candy neurons and the thermoregulatory zone, which may explain why even though 100% of women stop making estrogen, only 75% of women get hot flashes, and some women only have really mild hot flashes. So obviously, though, since it is the lack of estrogen that primarily causes hot flashes, taking estrogen is going to stop them. Simple. What does this new drug, fesolinitin, do? It's not estrogen. It's not a hormone. Fesolinitin is a neurokinin-3 receptor antagonist, meaning that fesolinitin binds to the overactive, going crazy candy neurons, just like estrogen would, so that the neurons calm down and do their job. Fesolinitin fools the thermoregulatory system into thinking estrogen is back in business and controlling things. Genius. Let me go through this one more time. The thermoregulatory center in the hypothalamus is controlled by neurokinin-3 receptor neurons, commonly known as candy neurons. Candy neurons are normally regulated by estrogen. When estrogen drops, the candy neurons go into overdrive. This disruption in the candy neuron activation causes hot flashes. 
both estrogen and fesulinotent inhibit this overactivity in the candy neurons and stops hot flashes from happening. So the details, fesulinotent is a once daily pill. In multiple clinical trials, there was a statistically significant reduction in both the frequency and severity of hot flashes compared to placebo. Fesulinotent stopped up to 93% of hot flashes in one trial. And the reduction in hot flashes was maintained through the entire 52-week study period. And that's important because when it comes to hot flash remedies, there's a really strong placebo effect, meaning just about anything will get rid of hot flashes if you have an expectation that it will do so. So all those products on menopause websites that promise to cool you down, well, they're going to definitely work, which is why there's so many convincing testimonials that make it seem reasonable to spend your money on the stuff. But those over-the-counters, herbs and spices and lotions and potions, they'll stop working after about three months. I mean, because the placebo effect is real, but it only lasts maybe 12 weeks. Therefore, any scientific trial that runs for three months or less doesn't eliminate the very real but not sustainable placebo effect. The same placebo effect of 20 to 50% reduction in the number of hot flashes is typically seen in every pharmaceutical hot flash trial. The fesulinotin trials went for a full year and it continued to work for the full year. So this is definitely not a placebo effect. In addition, in addition to dramatically decreasing hot flashes in these clinical trials, there was also no surprise, a significant reduction in sleep problems. And you're thinking, well, that's obvious. You get rid of the flashes and you're going to sleep better, which is true. And it's also true with estrogen. But unlike other drugs to help with hot flashes, this was part of the clinical trial. They measured it. All this sounds great, but side effects. What's going to be on the list of possible horrifying side effects that will be rapidly announced during the commercials you no doubt will be bombarded with? Well, here's the breakdown. A very small number of women in clinical trials experienced headache, nausea, urinary tract infection, diarrhea, upper respiratory tract infection, and fatigue. But there were no really serious side effects. And I know I hear this all the time from my patients. I know the concept of a new drug is, well, it's concerning to a lot of people because there's this not unreasonable fear that it hasn't been around very long. And what are the chances that it will cause, say, brain cancer down the road? And that's a valid concern with any new drug. And of course, there's always a chance that new information will emerge over time. But this drug was tested a lot. There were multiple clinical trials that collectively enrolled thousands of women with moderate to severe hot flashes across the U.S., Canada, and Europe. Most important, unlike a lot of other drugs that have been approved over the years, that were only tested in thin white women, there was a lot of diversity in the women who participated in the fesulinotin trials, which included Black women, Asian women, Hispanic women, women of all sizes, and women from multiple countries. So fesulinotin, by the way, is not the only non-hormonal option that will reduce hot flashes. I cover all the other options, both prescription and non-prescription, in my Hot Flash Hell book in chapters 8, 9, and 10. But here's the big question. This is the one that I'm already getting from so many people. Estrogen or fesulinotin? Most menopause experts are in agreement on this one. Estrogen is the gold standard. Estrogen has been around for a long time and is known to be safe and effective. And because it's been around such a long time, there are benefits that have been demonstrated that have not yet been demonstrated with fesulinotin. So while I've covered this in other episodes, I'm going to keep this simple and give you the quick rundown of what estrogen will do for you according to the current scientific evidence. And my list, which is in line with the 2022 North American Menopause Society position statement on hormone therapy, it's not based on my opinion. It's not based on my clinical experience. This is what has been proven in well-designed studies. So peri- and post-menopause women who take estrogen have fewer hot flashes, and less insomnia. Estrogen prevents bone loss and decreases fracture even in women without osteoporosis. The use of estrogen between the ages of 50 and 60 or within 10 years of entry into menopause results in a significant decrease in cardiac markers that are associated with heart attack, stroke, and coronary heart disease. So we know that 
estrogen therapy that is started early during the perimenopause and postmenopause are going to decrease heart disease. There is solid evidence that estrogen enhances mood and improves well-being in non-depressed perimenopausal women. Not only does hormone therapy help delay the onset of type 2 diabetes, but in women that have type 2 diabetes, estrogen appears to increase insulin levels and improve glucose control. That's a big one and not well appreciated, not discussed all that often. There's also a well-documented reduced incidence and mortality from colorectal cancer in hormone therapy users. Another thing, my patients who stop their hormone therapy, they're not surprised if their hot flashes return, but most had no idea that their arthritis would also return because women who take estrogen have less joint pain or stiffness compared with placebo. And anyone who's listened to my podcast on estrogen and skin knows that estrogen therapy increases skin thickness, increases collagen, increases elastin, and decreases wrinkles. And then there's that reduction in abdominal fat. Not enough to throw out your Spanx, but women who use estrogen do have less muffin top than women who do not. Peri and postmenopause women who take estrogen have better sex lives. Both systemic and local vaginal estrogen will turn sandpaper sex into satisfying slippery sex by increasing lubrication, blood flow, and sensation in both vulvar and vaginal tissues. Estrogen users have a measurable better quality of life, which is hardly shocking that if you sleep, think, have sex, and stop peeing every 10 minutes, you will enjoy life more. If you take estrogen and you start between the ages of 50 and 60 or within 10 years of the menopause transition, there is a 30% decrease in all-cause mortality. You will live longer. And not to sound like a broken record, but just a reminder that estrogen will not give you breast cancer. The women in the 50 to 60 year old group in the Women's Health Initiative that took estrogen alone had an 18% decrease in breast cancer. I go through the details in episode 31, the truth about hormone therapy, does it cause or does it prevent breast cancer? So bottom line, fesalinitin is safe and it's effective when it comes to getting rid of hot flashes and getting a decent night's sleep, but it won't help your vagina or your bones. So don't be so quick to flush your estrogen down the toilet. And I do want to mention here, I do not work for estrogen companies. I just want to give a balanced view of the current scientific evidence. But for the majority of women who, for whatever reason, choose not to take hormone therapy, this is really good news. And yes, this is something that I will be prescribing. <music> 